You're listening to The Devin Dixon Show, live from the One Law Studios. One Law, your dedicated personal injury attorneys. It's time for the buzz with the Queen Bee on The Devin Dixon Show. Yeah, throw down Thursday. We've been action-packed all day long. We'll get you a big finish and show recap. But in the meantime, if you missed anything wild, you missed anything woolly, that's why we have the Queen Bee in for the buzz. And it's been oh so long. You and I have both had crazy schedules, but it's good to have you back on again, Rach. Well, it's good to be back, Devin. I know, I know. Let's get right to our lead story. What are we, what are we, what are we throwing the first pitch with? All right, so we're going to talk about a story that's kind of been everywhere, but I guess we haven't touched on yet, is how Matt Barnes drove to Los Angeles from Santa Barbara to fight Derek Fisher for dating his estranged wife. They got in a fist fight at the house until the kids started yelling at them to stop, and they both walked away bloody, and, like, nothing was resolved at all. Yeah, I heard rumblings about this and the TMZs and the tabloids. It's been a pretty big story. Um, I, I, what do you make of this? I think it's ridiculous. Childish? <laughs> immature? I mean, you know, we do silly stories like this. this I mean, the story is right up there. It's some reality star or whatever. I don't, I don't really know who she is. But, yeah, the fact that he drove all the way to Los Angeles from Santa Barbara... And that takes a couple of hours, and that he had time to really think about what he was going to do when he got there, and he still went after it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, who won the fight? Do we know? Actually, neither of them won the fight, because once the kids started yelling for them to stop, they both walked away, and they both got beat up pretty well. Oh, jeez. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. So good. round two, I'm sure, is coming. <laughs> Can we get it on pay-per-view? I think, I think that would be better than the Pacquiao fight ever was. Yeah, and I think I think the reach of Barnes, I think he would be favored in, in, by Vegas, I, I would guess. Oh, yeah, well, plus... He and he has way more tattoos. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. Come on. <laughs> yeah, because tattoos indicate toughness. Yeah. Oh, all right, what else we got? All right, so we're going to talk about the Arizona State Mass Cut part. He uh, decided, first he decided to jump on the suburban Phoenix official but it turned out the official was recovering from back surgery and he actually tore his back muscle again oh geez he wouldn't get off the official would have pop and now the sun devils are saying that they're going to pay for his next back surgery <laughs> uh, where do you get this stuff at who knows you know i just look around that's why you have me <laughs> all right keep keep feeding me i love it all right so did you see what all the rookies are wearing this like in the past couple of weeks? The underoos, the princess dresses. I mean, the Mets rookies were given underoos to literally wear on this trip home from Cincinnati. They were not allowed to change. So all they did was walk around in these tiny, tiny little kids' underwear. Oh, boy. I wish I had been there. That's <laughs> all I can say. I am so sad. They let them out of the ballpark and back to their hotel. So they had to walk around the hotel, everything. Under, under, under ruse. Under, under ruse. ruse. Oh, my goodness. The underwear. Oh, my goodness. Can they make a movie about this? Is it going to be a movie? I, it someday? would be a very short movie. Yeah, like maybe one of those uh, documentaries, independent films. <laughs> yeah, like the, the, the little shorts before, like a big movie. Right. Yeah, I would actually watch that. Show me the, the, uh, yeah, you play that before the main main show at the theaters. It could be funny, right? I mean, it could be kind of a gaffe on it. I don't know. I don't know. All right, what else we got? Yeah, whatever. All right, so apparently a Blue Jays fan on September 18th, it was during the Red Sox Blue Jays game, this Toronto fan reportedly pulled a urinal off the bathroom wall at the Rogers Center and flooded the entire level. But this picture came out of this guy who supposedly did it. And with his pants pulled around his ankles, completely naked, <laughs> into the urinal, leaning back while yanking it. And they claim that he's the one who did it. And seconds later, it came off the wall. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I could have done without this story. Way to go. Way to go. And this is just, if you're at that game and you're on the 500 level, you're absolutely furious. You're walking through water. You're trying to go get a ballpark dog. And then you've got flooding because of some idiot. Yeah, pretty much. 
I mean, what they lock them up for? Pu- 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 public nudity? I mean, public nuisance? Public, public everything? Yeah. Public idiot? Well, I don't know. A little bit of everything? He should be blackballed from the stadium and from the beer stand. Uh, maybe just from the beer stand. Let's <laughs> not take away baseball forever. That's just unpatriotic. Uh, what else we got? We got time for one or two more quick stories. And then, everybody, we are going to play some Buzz Time trivia today, so we're going to want your phone calls in just a minute. Six seven three ninety three ninety eight. What else we got? Let's finish strong, Rach. All right, we need to talk about the Jets. We all know I love my sad, sad Jets, but they're bringing their own toilet paper to London. What? Don't you have other things to worry about than bringing your own toilet paper to London? Yeah, that that that's a little bit surprising. They took their own team, like was it wrapped in Jets logoed material? Yes, because yes, apparently the toilet paper in London is not good enough for their bucks, which half the time sucks anyway. If you were an undefeated team, fine. We'll talk about it. No, 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 no football team should take their own toilet paper anywhere. But you don't think Peyton Manning deserves at this point no. to take toilet paper? No, they stay in five-star hotels. The toilet paper will be just fine. No. No. Fine. Whatever. We're mocking them anyway. So That's something fine. Rex Ryan would have set up before he left to go coach uh, the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> please, let's not talk about Rex Ryan. He makes me nauseous. <laughs> oh, all right. We got time for one more quick story. What are we finishing with today? All right. So there was this, before the Yankees got knocked out, ugh, mm. there was this fan that they that had a chance to catch three different balls on the third baseline. And he ended up on a blooper reel after he failed all three times. He dropped a foul ball. Fine. He, it was followed up by a grounder that hopped in the stands and off of his chest. And then the third one, the worst one, he took an underhanded toss from the ball boy right off his face. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I have no words, but... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, one, two, three, and you're out. You cannot catch a foul ball. And that is the buzz. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. Rachel's going to stick around. More of the buzz. We play Buzz Time Trivia when we come back after this on ESPN Radio. Welcome back, everybody. Buzz Time Trivia! Throwdown Thursday, and let's go to the Queen Bee and our first contestant, Tim. Tim, how are you? Good. All right, here's your first question. All right, topic today. Baseball's clumsiest. Okay. All right. Milwaukee Brewers pitcher Steve Sparks once had the bizarre incident of injuring himself with which of the following? A soda can, a telephone book, a salad tong, or a magazine? Salad tong. What'd you say? Tongs. No, he actually was a telephone book. Telephone book. Telephone book. Telephone book. Mmm. Wow. He tried to imitate a trick he saw during a motivational spring training seminar and attempted to rip it in half and dislocated his shoulder. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let's go back to the phone lines. What's your name? It's Danny. Danny, here's your question. In 1990, Kevin Mitchell of the San Francisco Giants showed up late for spring training after eating which of the following? A T-bone steak, a donut, a carrot, or an ice cube? Carrot. What's that? No, it was actually a donut. Donut. <laughs> He don't. microwaved a frozen donut too long. It became too hard. He bit into it, broke his teeth, and he did root canal surgery. Oh my goodness, Kevin Mitchell! What? Yeah. What are you thinking? Six seven three ninety three ninety eight. Six seven three ninety three ninety eight. We got time for a couple more contestants. Back to the phone lines we go. Who's this? It's Dez. Dez, here's your question, buddy. A player's protective cup is supposed to do just that. Protect. Which of the following players found himself injured at the hands of the dreaded jock strap? Clint Barnes, Bo Jackson, Randy Johnson, or Ken Griffey Jr.? Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson? No, incorrect. Ken Griffey Jr. The kid? It was the kid with the jog strap? It pinched him down there, and he has to miss a game. Hmm. Jeez. We are, oh, what are we, 0 oh for 3? Yeah, oh. we're, we're, everybody's not doing that, though. Queen B is killing it, though. Oh, let's see if we can change that. Who's this? Sterling. Sterling, here's your question. Um, Detroit Tiger medical staff determined that the cause of Joel Zumaya's strained arm during the 2006 regular season was due to what? 
a high school rugby injury, excessive video game playing, lack of physical training, or sleeping on his arm. Oh, sleeping on his arm. No, it was excessive video game playing. Oh, it was actually from guitar <laughs> oh my gosh, Sterling, I thought you had it there, buddy. I really did. I thought I thought sleeping wrong would have been the culprit there. Man, oh man, you're brutal today. I know, it's just, and it's multiple choice, so they can't say that I'm making but, it too hard. I know, but they don't know if they should go with the serious answer or the goofy answer. It's very confusing. I, I think I'm O for myself, guessing along here in the studio. Let's go try it again. Who's this? Jim. Jim. All right, let's get one. Let's get one right. Here we go. All right, which one of the following players broke his tailbone in a suspect venison accident? Jose Canseco, Clint Barnes, uh, Mickey Mantle, or George Bell? Clint Barnes. You actually got it right. Yes! You got one. Yes! What's your name again? Jim. Jim. All right, Jim. Because you broke through and nobody else has today, I'm going to give you a $25 gift certificate to Player Sports Grill. All right, buddy? Great. All right. Going to Player Sports Grill. That's all the time we have for Bus Time Trivia on the show today. Nice job, Queen B. See ya. See ya next Thursday. She'll be back. Same time, same place for more of the Buzz and Buzz Time Trivia. Got to take a final break. We'll come back. We'll get you ready for that Snow Canyon Desert Hills game. We'll also get you ready for that Colts game uh, down in Houston against J.J. Watt. We'll break it down. We'll have some picks. Should be fun. And then uh, we'll have the Derek and Andy in for Region 9 Live tonight and tomorrow night, leading us up to high school kickoff presented by Legend Solar. Stick around.